I was referring to Mahabharata. I don't know if you can see this map. You have a few, because the map would be too crowded otherwise, a few of the important kingdoms mentioned in Mahabharata. Once again, you can see they cover the entire map of India. In fact, all the way to, to, to Afghanistan. And you see that, in addition, there, is, there are people in these kingdoms. And Mahabharata, which some anthropologists have called the first ethnographic project of India, or the first anthropological project of India, lists 363 ethnic groups, people. Today, we don't even list as many as that. Of course, we know there are many castes and communities, but in terms of peoples, ethnic entities, this is a remarkable achievement of the text. So it is aware of the diversity of the whole subcontinent. In fact, much bigger than today because it includes Bangladesh, it includes Pakistan, it includes Afghanistan. It's quite aware of that diversity. And in, in return, all these people will adopt these texts. So this is some of the mechanisms that we have to understand if we want to, to really understand uh, ancient India.